I am Dr. Mandeep Gar, Professor, Department of Radio Diagnosis at Postgraduate Institute of Medical Education and Research, Chandigarh, India. The whole world is reeling under ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, and the COVID dashboard shows that approximately 140 million patients of COVID have recovered, while how many of them have truly recovered remain evasive. As majority of these patients continue to have lingering symptoms even in their post-recovery phase. This is called long COVID. This term was first used by a patient on a social media as a hashtag on Twitter to describe her ongoing symptoms that continued even in her post-recovery phase. Recently, NICE guidelines given by National Institute of Care and Health Excellence, they have defined long COVID as the symptoms that persist beyond four weeks of acute COVID illness. Through the current review article, we have tried to describe the epidemiology, the etiopathogenesis, the clinical manifestations, the risk predictors, and the management strategies of long COVID. The risk of long COVID is going to be huge. And it is going to turn out as a second major public health crisis. The etiology of long COVID-19 is unknown and it is thought to be secondary to endotheliopathy, ongoing hypoxemic injuries, antigen antibody reaction, and even immune dysgenesis. The common manifestations of long COVID-19 are dyspnea and cough, fatigue, myalgias, palpitations, depression, and post-traumatic stress disorders, while more varied and debilitating injuries involving the pulmonary, cutaneous, neuropsychiatric, cardiovascular, and musculoskeletal systems are also being reported. In our review article, we have also tried to evaluate the risk predictors so that we can identify the subgroup of patients who need to be closely followed up and who need to be a part of surveillance studies in their post-recovery phase. Currently, there are no consensus guidelines for the management of these patients, but these patients need closer follow-up for their immediate, intermediate, and late complications. Now, majority of the patients are treated based on the symptoms they have. People are being given steroids, antifibrotic drugs, anticoagulants, and other anti-allergic medicines, depending upon the symptoms. Our healthcare professionals and policymakers, they need to be aware of this entity so as to augment our healthcare facilities and set up dedicated post-COVID care clinics and rehabilitation centers.